Hello there, my favorite students in the auto body shop. I had a good day today. Um, enjoyed your speeches this morning. I enjoyed your one-on-one -on -one elevator speeches. Let me say a few words about the elevator speech. I, the assignment isn't over. You're going to be doing an elevator speech every day. Every time we have class, I'm going to ask somebody to get up and do it. We'll have everybody do it at the same time, the same day. But I want you to perfect it so that you feel confident and that you can talk about yourself and who you are. The who, what, where, when, why of you and your circumstances or situation. Now, all of you today talked pretty much about uh, getting a job. And that was good. And what kind of job that you want to get or what kind of job you're doing right now. And that was great. Two things I want you to work on. Number one is eye contact. A couple of you were really good about keeping looking in the eye. And what you need to do to practice that is look in the mirror. And don't take your eyes off of your own eyes when you talk to yourself in the mirror. And say, my name is Bob Hopkins. My name is Jesus Rosas. My name is whatever. And uh, this is where I live. This is where I was born. This is what I do. This is what I prefer to do. These are my hobbies. These are my activities or whatever. And you know, you can do so many different elevator speeches. And every time you do one, it's going to be different. And it's going to be... Um, you know, appropriate. It's called extemporaneous speaking. There's three kinds of speaking. When you do an elevator speech, it's extemporaneous, which means it's off the top of your head. And as I mentioned today, somebody asked me, hey, Bob, is it okay if I use notes when I do my elevator speech? No, because you're not going to have notes when people ask you, who are you and what do you want? And why are you here? And where do you come from? And why are you involved in this organization? Or you're brand new to the class? Tell everybody who you are. Number two, I want you to work on, um, of course, is the quality of your voice. And I mentioned it to you, and I specifically mentioned it to several, that I want you to, distinct, to distinctly speak. Punctuate your words. Um, make sure that I understand what you're saying, especially your first name. My name is Bob Hopkins. My name is Jesus Rosas. My name is Sam Stevenson. My name is, my name is, so that people remember your name. And also, let's say that Sam is speaking to Jesus Rosas. What he should do from time to time is say, Jesus, um, my name is Sam. I'm so and so and so and so and so. so. Uh, it's really nice to know you, Jesus. So let me tell you about myself. Uh, last week, I was doing such and such and such and such. And Jesus, this is why what I felt about that. So if you mention the person's name, from time to time, while you're speaking, it will make Jesus, the receiver of the information, more interested in what you have to say. So I think it's really an important thing if you would try to do that as well. I want you to feel so comfortable talking to another person about who you are that they're going to feel very comfortable and relaxed, and they're going to want to know you better, and they're going to want to hire you, possibly, if that's what the, the, the reason is for your getting together. Okay. Anyway, I thought she did a great job. Number two, I wanted to thank um, Jesus Rosas for doing a good job today. He's the guinea pig, and I appreciate you following through with the assignment, that you being prepared today, that you had a nice prezi, which means that you figured out what a prezi was, and that it was uh, easy for me to manipulate so that you could actually talk to the students about it. You um, need to, for the rest of you, you need to have video or you need to have pictures in every one of those circles or in every screen, I want to see pictures. I want to see visuals. Just to remind you, um, Jesus, you did a good video. I liked it. I actually would like to play it some more again so that we can see the whole thing. And six minutes really isn't too long, um, especially when um, you're, you're giving a presentation on, a, on um, a full chapter. I could have listened to it for the whole thing. But that was, that was a good idea and a good thought process for you to do. There were so, several things from chapter one that I want to remind you of. First of all, and this is a very difficult one, is that sometimes before I speak, um, I don't first of all think about what I want to say. And what I want to say is dependent upon the circumstances and situation and who I'm talking to. If you don't particularly like the person that you're talking to, you need to think first about what it is that you're going to say before you just spit it out. Now, I did have 
I had two students in another class introduce each other, and I didn't know this, but the girl did not like the boy. She had a bad circumstance and situation with him last summer, and after she was finished, she came up to me. She said, I want to do it with somebody else because I don't like that person. Well, you know, sometimes that happens. You're going to get together with somebody that you're not going to really, really care for. But you know what? I think you need to get over it. You need to fake it. Um, because you still need to talk to people even if you don't care for them or like them. And not that you need to be their best friends. But, you know, they may be the one hiring. Or um, they may be the one to get you into the door for another job. So anyway, that's something you need to think about. So it's called intra personal relationships as opposed to interpersonal relationships, interpersonal relationships, which is actually talking to the person. Another thing that I like what was said today that we always have to remember is that um, our conversations are irreversible. You know, what I say to you, I can't take back. And everyday conversations in your family or your children or your aunt, your uncle, whatever, sometimes you get heated for the moment, and sometimes I regret what I say. And I wish I had said it in another way. And it's called Irreversible Conversations. And um, that was brought out today. And I was really glad that it was, was part of the deal. Um, I also want you to speak clearly. Um, I want you to think about what you say. But I want you to remember to slow down. And yes, you can talk very quickly. But make sure that you pronounce the words distinctly so that everybody can hear it. And it needs to be loud enough so that everybody in the room can hear what you have to say. Or maybe not everybody in the room, or maybe it's just one-on-one, -on -one, and maybe you need to adjust your voice volume to that particular person. And yes, you may be, feel like you're getting into their face and getting too close. And I've had people say to me before, Bob, you're in my personal space. Would you please back up? Well, there is a distance thing, which you have to kind of watch for, that you're not on top of people, but that you're close enough so that you're having a good conversation. Um, for next this next week, we're going to be talking about culture and um, the two people who are doing culture, and I can't remember their names, and I'm sorry, sorry for that. I think it's Matthew and Matthew and Sam. Is it Matthew and Sam? I think it is. So anyway, when the two of you speak, I want you to give examples of the culture that you're in. Give examples of what things that you talk about that make you different than somebody else. Um, I've had the experience of going to Mexico and living there. And when I lived in Mexico for a year, um, I realized I didn't know totally the Mexican culture, even though I was born in the Mexican border. Uh, it's different. And it's different by way of class, too, because I was with upper middle class students. And same thing in the United States and same thing in Poland and Greece and Germany or whatever. You have to know the culture before you just jump in. Um, you know, we Americans sometimes get a bad reputation because we go to another country and we act, act like a fool. Uh, it's because we don't know that this is the culture that is a little bit more discreet. And especially if you're talking about an Asian culture, and there's several of you there in the class of Asians. I know the Philippines is represented, and I don't know where the other person is from. And I can't remember your name even, but it's it's a uh, definitely um, another name. And I'm going through and looking here at the name and see if I can remember off the top of my head who you might be. Anthony Sayavong. And then Isayavong, where did you say you were from? You didn't, I don't think, but I do think that you're of Asian descent. Asian descent people have a culture that's a little bit more reserved. It's a little more standoffish. Um, sometimes you don't always shake hands. Women definitely don't. Sometimes you don't look people in the eye. And that's definitely of the A Indian culture. But you don't look people in the eye sometimes because it's, you're taught that it's disrespectful to do so. So when you're preparing this chapter two for Matthew, you and Sam, um, be sure and give examples of different kinds of cultures and include your own as well. Matthew, I think you're from a, a white uh, culture in the United States and um, maybe both of you are. I think Sam, you might as well be too. I think you're, you, you are as well. Give examples of how you might be different than maybe some of your classmates who come from a different culture. Um, 
when two people marry and their religions are different um, and sometimes the role of the woman is different I want you to think about how you fit in to your culture in the United States and how your culture ideas and mores your values are, might be different than the people that you surround yourself with and that's another thing I think is very very important um, I'm excited about um, this next week. Now I want all of you who are going to be attending and being in class to read chapter two. As I mentioned, they may want to give a pop test. In fact, I'll be talking to them and maybe we'll hand out five or six questions and ask you different things that would be important to the chapter before they make the presentation. Okay, now um, the third thing I want you to do is to make, go on um, online just like you're on now and look you see my syllabus well under assignments I have posted several things I need you to read I need you to read all of them because these are things that we're going to be doing but I want to make sure that you understand that I've written some things there one of them I think is called pay attention um, also there is an explanation of what our first speech is going to be about, which is an informative speech about a nonprofit organization. I want you to go online and I want you to find different nonprofit organizations that you may have an interest in and come back to class next week and give me three different ideas of three different topics that you might want to adopt, three different nonprofit organizations that you might like to choose from. And by the way, each of you can only do one. Um, I mean, we can't have more than one people do the NFL, one, or one person do um, you know, Big Brothers Big Sisters or Boys and Girls Clubs or whatever. I was thinking that some, one of the two of you may get online and find a nonprofit that has to do with the automobile industry. In fact, I went on this morning and I did find a couple of uh, organizations that are nonprofit organizations. And I really think that um, you would behoove yourself, that you would benefit yourself by getting some ideas other than just what you've heard in class. Do a little bit of research. Of course, that would be you know going online and putting in uh, nonprofit organizations in the arts or nonprofit organizations in health or education or whatever you think. Some of you may have some hobbies. I have horses. I could do one on horses. I do tennis. I could do the tennis foundation. I like football. I could do the Cowboys, the NFL alumni foundation and what they do for charitable causes. And so you can pick something that you do personally in life that you really, really like. I know some of you are addicted to cars. So those of you who are Go ahead and try to find a nonprofit organization that fits that. Along with your nonprofit organization, you need to do an outline. And an outline will look like this. It'll be number one, Roman numeral number one, the intro. Number two would be body. Number three is a conclusion. And under number intro, it will be A, capital A, and capital B, body capital A and capital B, conclusion A and B. That's all you need for your outline. But the outline is not really for me. The outline is really for you. And what it does is allow you to be able to find out the organization or put in the organization of what you want to talk about. Now you could do A, B, and C. A, B, and C, A, B, and C. But because it's only five to seven minutes, you probably are not going to have time to do any more than just A and B. The intro needs to be a story, and I told you that already. I want you to start everything with a story, a story that connects you with the topic that you're going to do. Um, you, a video would be appropriate with that nonprofit speech as well, and um, pictures because you're definitely going to use a pres prezi, with, that means with you and the organization with which you have connected with. So anyway, this is um, a little bit about what I want you to do for tomorrow's class. And I will also um, think about doing, telling you some more things that could uh, keep your time going forward. But thank you very much. Enjoyed the class today, and I'll see you next week. Bye.